Welcome to the Fat Cats Rugby Podcast, bringing you candid rugby conversations, great interviews and insights into Ugandan rugby, and a touch of rugby in Africa and the world over. Fat Cats Rugby Podcast is a product of Fat Cats Media Brand for all your audiovisual content needs and equipment hire. Hope you enjoy this episode. Is this saute? No, no, this is not the saute. <laughs> this saute this beef thing. Saute is shallow frying, you know, medium heat of in some a bit of oil. I need to learn how. I need to. Really. I need to pay more attention to your videos. To how can I come? How can I come? I just know the paprika, the what? Ah, okay, uh, fat cuts. <laughs> fat cuts podcast here on a balcony that is famous uh, on TikTok, uh, East Africa and Africa as well, and also worldwide. Um, here Thank with the God. roaming chef, as he just calls himself, Mr. Oh, Dennis Obachi. Thank you for yeah. having us in your home. No, welcome, Karibu. Karibu. You have a lovely home, and uh, you're the first Ugandans I'm hosting. Then on, on the that's Palco. exactly what I was going to ask. Are we the first? <laughs> you're the first Ugandans. We're the first Ugandans. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for embarrassing the country that I was talking about <laughs> saute instead of something else. But well. Here, as you see here, the famous set that has been on TikTok week in, week out, as well as X. Mm-hmm. So, good to have you on the podcast, and thank you for having us here in your home. Thank you for coming. Yes. It. So now, being the first Ugandans, which Ugandan dish would you be very fond of cooking? Cooking? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's a hard choice, but... Um you, you want to show me how to make senene? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so senene, basically, <laughs> I really don't cook, so I, I can't get this right. But you get the grasshoppers and you peel the you peel the feathers off, not the feathers, the wings off, as well as the legs. Feathers. Man, it's been a long day. Muganda, so you, yeah. Yes, so you pull off the, 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 the legs and the wings and whatever, and I think you have to wash them to clean them. And then eventually you put them in the saucepan as well as have some cooking oil or something, depending on how you want to cook them. Or sometimes you just put them in the oven, sizzle so mm. them a bit, and then boom, but cats learn how to cook. Deep fried will taste better. Fried will te- yeah. taste better? Yeah, All right, so we'd very much want to have you cook senene. Maybe next time when we're here, yeah, we'll carry year, a bag or two. Next year, we're actually, I'm planning a shoot somewhere in Uganda. I'm not right. sure of the location, Yes. Yeah, but I want to visit Uganda. Not to play rugby this time, yeah. Talk about playing rugby in Uganda. Did you ever have a chance to play in Uganda? Oh yeah, Hima. I won Hima. Uh, Hima you were games. that famous team of Mwamba? Of course. Really? Yeah. With Humphrey and uh, Humphrey, Collins. Collins, George Mbaye, Pablo Machange, Louis did you, Kisia, did you won it twice, right? And, and Kevin Wambua actually. Yeah, I, Kevin, I won it twice. You won it twice? Yeah. What are your fond memories of playing in Uganda? Rugby. Rugby wise? Yes. Uh, that's a tough question because for you for you to have fond memories, yes. you know, it's when like winning is a challenge. Yes. But when we go to Uganda, you know, we expect you are going to win. So <laughs> Kenyans, yeah, this there, arrogance needs there, to stop. There are really no fond this memories. This arrogance, no fond memories. Yeah, because there was no surprises there. Yes. Yeah, but outside the pitch, yeah, um, yeah it was quite it, it was quite something. I don't remember much for obvious reasons. Yes. But it was quite something. And the food is good and, and quite cheap. The people are welcoming, of course, you know. That's all that matters when you visit um, new countries, the experience, or how people made you feel. So how people made us feel, they fe- made us feel, or me personally, welcomed. Yeah, food was good. Yeah, but rugby-wise, you guys need to pull up your socks here. Yeah. Talking about the rugby, <laughs> pulling up socks. <laughs> Yesterday, we had the Elgon Cup. But we lost as always. Sips water before we discuss the Elgon <laughs> Cup. Yeah, we came a bit short, uh, just losing by two points, 27 25. But that gives us the advantage going into Kampala. What advantage? Going into a game of that magnitude, that nature, with home support, with a deficit said, of stop, two. You know, playing Uganda, stop, you know, maybe in, in, for Ugandans, of yes. course, it's a big game playing Kenya. It's a big game playing Kenya. But for us, it's just, you know, it's Uganda. We are going to win. Again, by a bigger margin. Yes. And yeah. Well, I can't remember the last time we lost to Uganda. You know what they say? Don't know what you've got until it's gone. So be careful with that. <laughs> no more Elgon Cup and we'll see you coming back to us. <laughs> yes. So the Elgon Cup. Yesterday, Uganda tried to put up a show. Did some things right. And Kenya did some things better. 
managing to score, I think, two tries off the driving mall. And that particularly puts Uganda in a position. In every this is the worst Kenya Simba game. side I've ever seen. But you guys managed you guys to sneak off. Lost. We still lost. It's okay. It's you fine. You lost our worst ever side. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, the good thing is that the Elgon Cup is two legs. Yeah. So we have you back in Kampala. And I would very much want to record a video as soon as the game is done, sending it to you and telling you that, you know what? We would have won. We, we still would have won by the time you guys are recording that video. Mark these words. And I think by a bonus let's, 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 let's put that on record. Tie that in. Cut that out. Fat Cats Podcast, Dennis Ombachi says, you lose. Yeah, you guys will lose. Okay, Uganda we will, will win. We will win. All right. Um, now let's go where we are familiar. Kenya Sevens. Uh -huh. The Shuja. Uh -huh. World Series. You're back on the World Series. Uh, but before even you got back onto the, before you got back onto the World Series this year, there has always been that story. Uh -huh. That uh, fight from when you started uh -huh. up to where you finished going to the Olympics, going to the Rugby World Cup, winning a seven series in uh -huh. Singapore. How was that? It was good. It was a good experience. Uh, I think it was, uh, I was a bit privileged to be part of the, what we call the glory, glory days. Yeah, it was, it's amazing. And I think the more, once you retire, the more um, time you spend outside here, it's when, you know, some of these little, they seem like little achievements at yeah. that particular point in time, they, they sort of starts growing into you. Because when you're a player, it's like you're a soldier. You're, you're, in, you're, you're doing your job. It's, it, it was still, it was a job well done. Okay, we would have done better, but we achieved this. But once you are out, you completely detach yourself, is when you actually now start to even appreciate yourself more. Maybe the other time people were appreciating you more. They were like, ah, you guys qualified, you went to the Olympics. Uh, but for me, it was part of my job description at that particular moment in time. But I think now as a sort of a fully fledged civilian, I sort of um, appreciate the, the little achievements we did make <laughs> here and there. Yeah, one of them big as, as much as you scored the try that took you to the Olympics. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the Olympic journey like? Tell us about scoring that particular try. Oh, that try. Uh, yeah, these questions are keep being asked, but I really don't remember much. Um, I just remembered we, as I said, we had a job to do. Uh, that particular moment in time, when I got the ball, I, of course I had had the buzzer, and I, I would like to tell you like, oh, uh, try to be positive, but um, I knew we still had a chance. Um, most of us inside there, we knew we had a chance. Of course, life always gives you a second chance. Yeah. But there's that despair that was um, creeping in. So once I got the ball and I started that match off the bench. So I, I came in, I think, um, almost early in the second half or, or late in the first half. Yeah, so for me, it was, uh, anyway, the, the buzzer has gone. Um, this is my, my chance. Let me just try and do something. There was, there, was not the, there was no thought process around it. I was just... I was just doing my job, you know, what we've been trained, what, you know, uh, applying mainly what um, um, our strength and condition coach, uh, Kimani, the, at that point, had, had taught us. Yeah, so just caught the ball and then try to run as fast as possible and reach the other line without people touching you. And if they touch you, try and evade them. Uh, just basic rugby. Yeah, and I, find my, uh, I found myself uh, in the try box. I saw people celebrating, but as I said again, at that moment in time, it was really not a, a huge achievement. It was a, a job well done. Yeah, but every time now that I'm outside now and I see the clip, I think I see it now in different eyes, different perspectives. Now that my athletic um, abilities are also limited, you know, I haven't worked out for, I don't know, three, four years. Yeah. So it, now it starts looks looking more and more like, like an achievement, especially now that I can see it and watch a few of those clips with, with my son. Yeah, so it's a beautiful feeling. You just decided to play rugby? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the million dollar question to ask every rugby uh, parent. I yes. definitely would want him to, to do some, any, any form of sport. If he does rugby, well and good. Um, yeah, but again, I, I hope by that time things will have changed. Because um, I think the era we are moving in, it's all about picking passions as well that, that pay you. Yeah? Um, if it's a side hobby, yes, you can do it as a hobby. But if you really want to do, to be the best at, at anything, you have to look at it from um, the eyes of a professional. And yeah, so uh, professional-wise, 
there's still a lot that needs to change so that it can even first of all motivate you know young kids because i think the, the days of us being motivated and you know, playing for your country which is the most pre prestigious thing, uh, thing ever uh, all the travels um, and every everything um, i think the, the older you become the more you realize that you also need something you know um, for your future because the shelf life of um, of any sports sports yeah. career it's like milk you know if you are able to squeeze in eight to ten years that uh, you that's, actually a, that's a good career yeah, you, that, that's a good career yeah so and by that time you should be able to sort of giving you a learning pad or set you up um, in future yeah so yeah. For, about my kids doing sports they definitely have to be to be doing sports sports is good for any human being that that grows up but if it's to take up professionally uh yeah, I also want returns in my investment. I'm not going to invest in, you know, <laughs> throw him in a, <laughs> yes. in a glory hole. In a glory hole, yes. Yeah, but he will play sports. He will choose. Of course, I'll try to introduce him to, to rugby the same way. I try to introduce him to cooking, which he already likes. Yes. So, yeah, so maybe he will like rugby, but at the end of the day, you really have no control. You can only guide kids. You can't control what they want to do. Yeah, if that was the case, Michael Jordan's kids would all be in the NBA. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you talked about uh, Godfrey Kimani very much. I think also popular person who helped uh, springboard oh, the Uganda actually, yeah, Sevens. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah he was a uh, uh, Sevens uh, SNC as well, and, yeah. and started that particular rebuild. Was mm -hmm. he with you in twenty in the Singapore series? Yeah, yeah, he was there. He was there. Geoffrey Kimani have been Geoffrey Kimani. Um, I've worked with him since I, I joined the team. Yeah. As an uh, as a young 18 year old, I think that was around two, 2010, yeah, late 2010 or early 2011. Yeah. So I've been with Kimani for for the very long time, and all I can say is, not even one of the best. I think in East Africa, he's the best. In Africa, um, if not the best, right? for me, he is the best <laughs> in the world among the top top. Top top trainers, yeah. Top, top he understands trainers. more than 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 you know what it entails technically, like what people should do. Um, a lot of things, you know, it's just like being a coach. Uh, your technical ability is not withstanding. There are lots of other things, you know, people skills, you know, how to get people to to work together. Yeah, so he really knows how to to bring <coughs> a unit out of different group of several. Um, differently as well able and talented athletes all right yeah and i think i think snc has been uh one of the key cornerstones of many uh rugby programs growth because you can clearly see that at the moment you have your snc in check it mm -hmm. kind of translates into the field looking at yesterday you could clearly see the effect of snc uh, players yeah, hands on yeah. knees and, 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 have SNC, have and yeah, we have we have we have some of the best oh, it coaches was the jet lag. you know you had you guys <laughs> playing about the jet lag and yet you were on the bus <laughs> <laughs> you saw the tweets where we said we have, we have landed, so yeah, yeah, have landed no. safely. Uganda Queens have landed, landed safely. Landed from where? From, from the bus station. You only land from <laughs> Landing means you have arrived. No. It doesn't matter how you arrive. It's For you to land. Yes. You know, I think also your education system is a bit. Yes. Yeah, uh, seven needs to invest more. For you to land, <laughs> you have to be a bit high so that you can land. You know, land yes. is coming down. Yeah, when you we come by road, you are already went through the road. 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 We ran through the Rift Valley. You, know, you just arrived. Yes. You, you just arrived. <laughs> you and uh, the person who took a donkey from Uganda uh, yes. same WhatsApp group. No, but the you passport is stamped. The passport is stamped. Immigration clears you. That is the clear sign you have landed. Even if I cross the border with a donkey, my yes. passport will be stamped. Uh, <laughs> then it's no, 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 and no. And then no, start no, complaining no. about jet lag. Jet lag. No one complained about jet lag. No, you guys were complaining yesterday when you guys were losing. You're saying yes. our, our players are jet lag. Oh, no, it was the food. The food what? had no soup. We did lubricants here. Back yeah, in even the today, days. that's why I'm like, Uganda also always complain. Always uh, complain. So, yes. Food is dry. <laughs> today, you're just today we're going to have dry chicken. Dry chicken. With lots of chilies. Lots of chilies. Yeah. Ah. Dried chicken, it's a peri peri chicken, so dry with lots of chilies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no soup. No soup whatsoever. <laughs> but going to the soup thing, what is Kenya's problem with soup? Why don't you get soup? We have more than enough food. Uh, yes. Why, 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 would, why would you want you to You need eat to get soup, soup to put fluids in the knee. The synovial fluid needs to be in check. 
again back to my earlier statement in your education <laughs> system <laughs> would you think <laughs> Kenyans you need you think soup and, and for guys for soup. guys who don't take a lot of soup I don't know why you have too many dance moves I'm not going to comment on that because I can't dance <laughs> yeah, you can't dance I can't dance well, no, you guys have the you have that. the famous famous um, dance celebrations that keep on rolling so now getting into the cooking seeing some peri peri chicken uh, on uh -huh. the deck uh, that we're going to partake in hopefully later on after this later, but later, later. transition uh -huh. rugby to cooking uh -huh. where do we get, where, where does that start from uh transition i would say transition is a process and it doesn't yeah. start from when like your career uh, your sunset days are there yeah so, you know oh i'm retiring tomorrow i need to transition uh i think that will be a bit more of a shock move so for me transition it's um it's the same way like realize which part of the country or the world you're playing yeah our sports um kenya uganda i believe we are and going through you know the uh the same problems um at the moment so uh, for me personally speaking because people also uh, start playing rugby with different goals different yeah. agendas um for me uh, um i grew to love the game along the way but i started playing rugby it was just a means for an end for me to sort of shake away poverty you know yeah. as, I, as i plan myself up um for the future because by the time i you know five years it takes me five years to go through university so i was like by the time i get a job stable you know i can support my family and everything i need something while i still work on on, on my future something yeah. that will get me there yeah so i was like what did i play in high school or rugby let me now put all my focus um in rugby and also i usually tell people you don't really have to to love something for you to be to be good at it yeah um it's it's um yeah so anything you know it, it's all about hard work and once something uh starts once your passion your hobby starts making you income yeah trust me you will uh, even if you don't even if you didn't like it even if it was, it was not a passion or a hobby it was just a job but once it starts fulfilling your um, your needs you know it keeps you busy <clears throat> pays your bills gets your friends you know you travel the world it now it, you now uh, grow to to love it so for yeah. me i grew to uh, to love like uh, rugby along the way uh the friends i made the exposure and everything but as i was saying before um i joined solely for the purpose of trying to make money make ends money meet. yeah make ends meet so as much as it's it's, it's it's sports at the end of the day it's a career it's what we do full time yeah so it was keeping me afloat as i was still going through school but at the back of my mind i always knew the i needed um an exit strategy whether whether it's going to be early or later on in, in life because i was unfortunate enough i've been through four surgeries so okay. through each and every other uh major surgery it was always like what if, what if this is the last uh, the last time the last time yeah so my entire career i think i was always in that mode of always thinking about the my my next move knowing yeah. that uh sports and it reaches a level you know where you sort of you feel like you've played in the rugby world cup community and everything so once also the the challenges so, sort of cease existing yeah. now you're just uh playing because rugby is there you're just passing time and it's just earning your bills so yeah for me i already had I already knew in the back of my mind I needed something there are lots of things that I was uh, and I tried like I was still playing or immediately when I retired before I settled to this which is another longer story yeah that's the story I'm interested in because <laughs> everyone would wonder that exit exit strategies are very very important especially in the game that is one of contact yeah the transition from stopping to play uh, rugby stopping lifting weights uh -huh. and then starting to maybe pick up on your career that you kind of abandoned or put on the shelf because of rugby that's 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 something that very many players it need is, to get inspired it, it from is tough, inspired of. and that is what actually because for me i was like by the time i um, i was retiring yes my colleagues who graduated from the university were already six years ahead you know in the field in the field yes yes if so even if, even even if now me <clears throat> i was to come i was going to join at a very junior junior level yeah level yeah yes. so working myself also back up then is, it was going to be another another challenge I, like I, I spent the best part of my of my teenage years yeah. until the late 20s you know <clears throat> climbing up the sports ladder which i did quite well 
but I don't think I was ready now to start again in the corporate yeah. ladder from the bottom. It was all about building from what I had already built. What else can I add on top of it yeah. so that I can, it can take me to another level so that both brands, uh, Denis Ombachi, the, the rugby player, the, rugby well player, the, the career Olympia person, and everything, yeah. yeah. So what else can I add on to that and do and still make uh, bring food to the to the table without yeah. me going for a regular um, nine to five job which i'm also not a i'm a nine to five uh, person especially after playing sports which as a little it's full of discipline but yeah full of uh, freedom as well yeah so that was a challenge so for me i always knew i needed lots of plan b's and i tried a lot of things you know i tried cooking in people's houses i i, I sold sauces Okay. I was because I'm also good at carpentry because I made this table and oh, you made this actually table. everything yeah this chopping board yes so at one point I was like oh let me sell chopping boards and stuff so I tried all of this um, until I settled because like when we were still playing rugby in our heydays the yeah. influencer marketing was really not was really not a thing. no that's not a thing yes it was not a thing but I was um, I had a hobby of uh, cooking at that particular point in time but now when uh, it was approaching COVID you know influencer marketing was um, picking up and everything yes. so for me it was like come to think of it you know the best influencers in the world are, um, are actually entertainers yes. mainly musicians and sportsmen yeah and many sportsmen don't know how to capitalize on the social capital that uh, they or, or we do possess like we already have a we already have a platform the fact that you play for your country it's, it's still a badge of honor. You uh, played at the World Cup, another badge at the Olympic, you know. Commonwealth you're, Games as yeah, well, yeah. You're not any other regular person. There are very few people who played in, the, in, in, in a rugby World Cup. There are very, very few people in the world who played in the Commonwealth Games and even fewer people who competed uh, at the Olympics. So what other valuable skill can you add on top of your athletic sporting achievements that you still can continue uh, selling outside there? So for me, it was cooking. And that's when I started now trying now, even before starting the influencer thing. Yeah. How they named the roaming chef started because I used to move from house to house. House to house, yeah, yes. Cooking for people. So I was like, okay, what do I call my name? So yeah. the roaming chef, the people, the name that people know me now was my business uh, name earlier on, which was good. You know, it was always uh, it's challenging, which is also something as a sportsman you always look, you always look for um, in life. So it was challenging. It made new people. But also it was not making me enough money as I wanted at once. It, it, it was good money, yeah. but it was not the amount I because I, I was starting a family and everything. So I, I needed more. So I, I also started selling sauces while doing it at the same time. But then I quickly realized uh, I suck at business skills and everything. Like they were running out even before yeah. I, I produced them. But the entire chain and everything, uh, it, I was like, okay, this is too hectic. I need also something. Well, I'm also a bit lazy, you know. <laughs> I need something. For the rugby that you played, to hear your lazy is quite the odd confession. Yes. Oh, I, I want things done efficiently and quick. I was like, yeah. okay, I need to make slightly more money, or not even slightly more, more money, while not having to deal with emotions. Because once you, 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 you start uh, involving yourself with a lot of people in the supply chains, the deliveries, the uh, farmers and everything, you start dealing with a lot of people, uh, lots of emotions, and that's the same reason why I still shoot and edit my videos. Yes. I prefer working for myself. Yes. So if it's disappointing someone, I know at the end of the day, it's myself I'm disappointed. So the, uh, you limit the kind of conflicts as well uh, with people. Yeah, so I settled on, on this thing. So the balcony never existed. It was just a space. Yes. And then my wife was pregnant at, um, at that point in time. So I was still selling chilies, so yes. and I couldn't cook the chilies inside because the yes, chilies because were the chilies, yes. So I used to make the chilies outside here, uh, do a, a, a bit, a few short clips here and there, posting it. And I'm like, oh, why are people surprised that someone is cooking from the balcony? It, it feels normal to me, but I, then I was like, ah, people actually like this kind of content. So what other skills? That time I was still selling chopping boards because I did woodwork way, way back in school. So I was like, uh, <coughs> it's COVID as well. So yeah. our contracts have been sort of terminated or suspended. Yeah. So I had a lot of free time. So while I was selling sauces, or, um, I went to the carpentry shop, took almost one, one and a half months, you know, while keeping myself busy as well. So I came up with this setup and then started doing cooking videos here and sharing it. And then, yeah, so they started, and uh, that's actually the, the journey kind of started. So the video started getting more traction here and there before I started putting the voiceovers later on in La um, I think one the and a half famous years Dan, ago, yeah, Dan the Dan, Dan also yes. just came about.
subconsciously. So where, where did Dan come from, by the way? Dan is, is just a subconscious, because in, in my mind, like, whatever I do, even if it's, um, it's at home, if I manage to complete a task, it, I, I say it um, in my head. So when I started doing the voiceovers, because I didn't know how to do voiceovers, yes. so I was just reading my mind. I was yes. just saying whatever was in my mind. And then I noticed people were, were noticing it more, and then um, I came to check that, okay, they're not noticing it in a bad way. Yes. They kind of like it. So I, they kind of like it. Uh, it sticks. It's also what I do every day. So let me just make it my thing. And nowadays, if it misses out, people complain. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a procrastinator, always when you finish a task, just say done. It will help. Oh, with yeah. everything, yes, and it I will am help the you. The worst that. procrastinator outside there. That's why, even for these interviews, <laughs> if you don't do it today, yeah, you don't do it today, uh, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. So, how important are, uh, are these skills that, um, in addition to the rugby, the handling, uh -huh. the defense, the attack, but how important are these other skills that we learn from school or from vocational schools in planning your exit from the game? Oh, yeah, actually, uh, like the. I, I think the only regrets I had from, from my rugby career is I focused more on the game <coughs> without building. <coughs> my, the education is education is, is okay. I was still yeah. studying. I managed to graduate while still studying. But there's a lot of things that I was still lacking, you know, that uh, not even an office job, even a freelance job or influencer, like whatever we do. Yeah. You know, people's skills, you know, skills like public speaking. Like when you're in a sports professional setup you're just used to a certain number of people so you might think you're actually good at speaking to people yes but the outside world is a totally different world you know even how you speak to people is different than how you speak to a teammate in a team set setup yeah uh, outside here it will it will look a bit more crude yeah, yeah it looks more, uh, more crude yes <laughs> 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 kenyans are more crude but go on <laughs> yeah so yeah those public speaking skills you know simple things like writing an email Yes. You know, selling yourself, uh, yeah. coming up with a um, red card, um, some skills like, uh, important skills like negotiations. Yes. You know, yeah, lots lots of things that um, financial literacy, yeah, that I wish I paid more focus on that than just how much I was um, lifting or squatting. Yes. Which is still equally important, but, yes. you know, uh, we, need, we need to, um, our sportsmen, you know, especially the young generation, to approach um, sports or life and career in a holistic manner you know you, you you're good at sport but you also to have to be good to be able to survive outside here because the life that we live in sports um as much i, I don't want to say it's not a real life it's a real life but it's a life in, it's, it's your life in sports once you step outside the the life outside here is it's totally different different it requires you know different set of skills <clears throat> for you to be able to navigate it and what we can build on is the values that the, also the, the people outside here don't have. The things we pick up from sports, you know, like um, hard work, you know, consistency of to do the same thing repeatedly yeah. over and over. Our ability, you know, to learn and unlearn, which is a very crucial ability. You know, people just assume that you need to be a quick learner. But you also need to be able to unlearn quick so you can learn another uh, skill. So, and sports people, we are equally talented, you know, because... Uh, our set of moves, our set of plays, how yes. we approach a game, they change hourly by minute, weekly, this, how we play this team and the other one. We have to keep learning and learning new things. Yeah, so lots of these things, they need to, to focus um, on that. And their life outside rugby, their um, uh, relationships with their families as well. Because when you're in, in, the, in, in sports, you know, it feels like that's the family. But once those curtains usually close, is when you realize, okay, Life outside you need to also build now another. Of course, some friendships continue, but outside here you also need your to build also your your safe space outside here. Like yeah. when you're sports, like okay, I have a problem, I'll call so and so, I'll yes. call so and so, they'll be able to sort me. But in the real world, also because them they're also in the real world, the real world they're yes. facing the same challenges. Challenges you. It's it's not the same close band of brothers uh, we had. So you also need to have a life outside sports each and every particular time. Wow, talking about backline set moves, um, I think Kenya needs to watch that move again. They didn't see that oh, one yeah, coming that from one, Uganda. Even me, I didn't see that. <laughs> didn't see it coming. Yeah, that one I saw it, but then I blamed our defense. If yeah. I was there, that guy would not have passed. We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> now, back to the rugby. You mentioned um, injuries. Six uh -huh. surgeries? Yeah, about five, five, six, five, five major surgeries, yeah. What has the toll on the body? And you kept on going. 
Oh yeah, it, it takes it takes a toll, but uh, as I said, at the end of the day, it was a job. Yeah. So you have to just uh, keep coming back, and how you come back, you know, it also says more about your your character. But I think it takes more toll mentally than because bones do heal. Yes. But the, the mental toll it takes is something that you might not notice, but it will yeah it will come bite you back in the ass may, as you are still playing or maybe when you have retired. And everything so like we usually focus on how to heal muscles tissues and everything but i think also the men even rugby sports in its own you know it, it's not an easy career it takes a lot of toll on you mentally because it's, it's a sport full of adrenaline you know full of highs and lows basically playing rugby is, is, is like doing drugs basically it's like you're on cocaine. cocaine today is a high tomorrow you lose you lose a lot yeah no but you gather you guys you're always on the down no 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 and you know, there's no other greater feeling than putting the dagger in Kenya's heart. I know. In a Rugby World Cup year. So going into next year's qualifiers, I think this video will be uh, played in the, in, the, in the coaching sessions to remind the players what's at stake. If Museven will not have switched off the internet. <laughs> That's in 2026. Not yet ready. Not yet ready. You're too early for that. You're too early for that. So now, the mental aspect of, of, of coming back from the injuries. Uh -huh. uh, we've had very many players... Uh, in Uganda and even world all over who have had to stop playing because of the impact has had on their mental health, yeah. on their mindset, their ability to, 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 to continue and just say that at this point my body can't take no more. Yeah. We've had very many players. At that particular point, you who has been through all these uh, surgeries and the like, mm -hmm. what advice would you give such players or even sports personalities? Uh, at the end of the day, uh, injury is a part of the game. They're unfortunate. We, nobody ever wishes, you know, to get injured. That's why we train hard so that we can also avoid injuries. But I think we also need to come to the acceptance that injury is the same as winning and losing a part of the game. Yeah. And they can always happen any minute, any month, any week, any second at your prime when you're still starting. That's why um, I think part of healing for me... Uh, if you if, if you if in your mind you always have a, a viable plan B, yeah, you know it's easier to heal when you know okay if it doesn't uh, happen I, I still can can do this. But if if something is your uh, lifeline, if, yeah, if this is your um, life and death, then even healing now becomes a challenge. It becomes more tougher because you yeah. know if I don't make it, uh, that's it. My life is over. I, I have no nowhere else to run. Yeah, to. nowhere else to run to. So. You even pile up more pressure in your head than than the, the actual real problem, which is the injury, which will eventually maybe heal. But because of the problems you're already making up in your head, that's when I start looking for these escape routes. That's why many athletes, you know, um, the face of drug abuse is either while you're injured or immediately you're back from from the injury. Because yeah. also recovering, that's just the bones and the muscles that have, have healed. But now you've recovered your back. There's also that it's just like giving birth, you know. Yeah. People like assume like, oh, okay, the everything goes back to normal. Yes. Over. But then now that's when the postpartum depression keeps yes. kicks in. You have now a key to look for. It's the same as injuries. When you think, because for me I usually say recovery, physical recovery is the easiest bit. You know that one that doctors help you and everything. But now you're back. Yeah. You have these mental, um, uh, the mental hurdles blockade. you have to, yeah, yeah the mental hurdles you have to get over that you have to get over, um, over, over it uh, by yourself. And it gets easier, you know, if you have someone to, to talk to, someone who, yeah. has, who has gone through it. Like all prob problems are, um, are easier shared, but injuries will always be there. Uh, yeah, uh, which also falls down to player welfare. Yeah. You know, it also depends on how. Uh, your team, your country, or your union is taking care of you and you're injured, it will also affect you mentally. You know, yeah. if, if you feel neglected and you are put all your eggs, you put in, all that your eggs in that basket, yeah, it kind yeah, of... Yeah, so it, it kind of also demoralizes you. So, like, injury and psychology is uh, it, it's something that needs around 12 hours to discuss on this podcast. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. I, you, you, you go through the you go through the paces seeing your 
friends or even players just yeah. go through it and it's, it, 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 it disturbs a lot. And the thing is that you can see it, you can know, but yes. uh, to be fair, honest, as a player at that particular point in time, you also have your own problems. Yes. It's really hard to come in. That's why um, there has to be a system where there are professionals who are actually dealing, uh, good at dealing with this, especially these things about to do about uh, with sports psychology. Sports psychology, yes. Yeah, and sports psychology is not about... Um, um, like mental health, okay, depression, bipolar. Sports psychology yes. is also broad. It's all. It's also about how do you approach um, a game when, like, maybe how you, if you won the previous one, yes. how do you approach this game? Which mentality do you need if you are coming from losing five games in a row, like yes. or, or ten, like Uganda? You know, <laughs> sports psychology. Yes. You know, it's how to handle fame. Yeah, because fame also corrupts. You know, you're a sportsman, you're a star, you think, oh, this is it. It also corrupts. Like, sports psychology is how, it's a whole, a whole ecosystem, you know, taking care of your mental, the, the chemistry of your brain, your hormones, you know, your behavior, and how you, you stand maybe before a game, how, how you approach the interviews, because it's also the aura you, um, you, you exude is yes. how your opponents will... Will, will, will match yeah, up and, in terms and of... It, yeah. I think it's... Um, it, it's something um, in East Africa I don't think we've really taken much. What do you think needs to be done to improve East African rugby? More funding. More funding. There's no running Money. away from it. Yeah. Yeah. Where the sport is going now, uh, as much as we can blame our unions, which also is, is their mandate, yes. but we need the, the corporate money to, to come in. Yeah. But also as we wait for the corporate money, like um, what are we doing by our, um, our, our own sales, you know, to sell, to sell maybe Ugandan rugby or Kenyan rugby? Uh, that is not included maybe it's not part of the government or the yeah. union included and it's it, it starts with the little things you know branding sports branding which is also something that we are not very good at yeah we're not very good at that at all it's not good at we are not good at branding and packaging sports as a whole in kenya both kenya uganda but it has to start at the uh, micro level uh, with the players not even many players have um social media account you know yeah. The, 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 the world we are moving in nowadays, is, is, it's all about people just meet on, on social media. People will know about you on social media. People will know about Ugandan rugby because one of their players, what they are doing, they are maybe showing their life in social media, yeah. uh, their life as a sportsman in Uganda and everything. So uh, that is something that is lacking amongst uh, the players. Of course, public speaking, you know, things that yeah. I will say. We have players who can, you know, present uh, not just your athletic ability, you know. Yeah, but you can be able to, to sell yourself outside there, sell, sell the sport that um, you are doing. Because the, the new generation, most of this new generation, uh, they they want most of the things they, or the things they're interested in is not something that, like for us, or we are like, oh, when I grow up, I wanna be a police or everything. Yes. Nowadays, they're just influenced by what influenced by what, what, what they see. Yeah. Yeah, during the break, Dennis said that he had to stop the Christian crate that he had cooked from yesterday from burning, so yeah. he has saved it, but... Now we are almost, almost good to go. Actually, it's done. <laughs> it's done, eh? It's done, it's done, it's cooked. Okay, Just now it's uh, thinly sliced, fried, done. This is not fried. Yes. This is grilled. As I said, the education Guys, system I need, in Uganda... No, no, it's not the education system, it's me. Don't blame this on the government. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame this one on the government. They send their dumbest. No, 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 no. I'm actually the brightest among many. You're the brightest. Among many. So you should be concerned about the rest who have, who have left behind. The likes of Musadja. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the dumb what, 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 what's your memory of Musaja? Why have you picked Musaja? Well, Musa, Musaja is a good friend of mine. Like, yes. um, when he was still playing for Harley Queens, that time I was oh, still yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So we used to hang out a lot. and Yeah, he used to eat a lot. He eats, that guy he eats, eats a lot. He eats a lot. He eats too much. <laughs> I, I told him he has to reduce his portions or he'll never grow rich. <laughs> <laughs> Musaja will send a message to you. Uh, Musaja, good, a very good friend of mine. Yes. Yes, okay, so now the um, TikTok uh -huh. sensation now. Um, seen a few clips here and there, many that have made you very, very famous. Uh -huh. Rugby was your entry, yeah. and now TikTok is your exit. How, is, how, 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 how important has TikTok been in this career of yours, growing? I, I, I don't think I can put like all the success on. Yeah. Uh, on, on TikTok, but I, but TikTok sort of uh, revolutionized um, content creation because before before TikTok it was uh, 
breaking, you know, breaking that barrier was 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 a bit challenging if you need to go through the people already yeah. uh, there. But TikTok, uh, the, the good thing about TikTok is a platform, I will say, for for anyone and everyone. There's something for everyone and everyone. You don't have to look in a particular maybe kind of way. Yeah. You just you just need a phone and. If, if whatever you're you're trying to sell, whatever you're trying to, even if it's, it's joke, even if it's just your life, you're trying to sell and show people outside there, there'll always be someone you know to to, to consume it. And during the TikToks, you know, formative years, um, yeah, I believe that's where I got exposed to 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 an audience that's outside. I would say Kenya and yeah. and, and Africa. I think yeah, 2020 20, 20, 20, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, I think that was a period that. Um, led up to to me winning you know, TikTok creator of the year in, in Africa. Yeah, so it was, yeah, TikTok has been, uh, it, it has been a blessing, but I would say each and every plat platform is is different. It's just like a country, each and every platform is the different uh, promises. So yeah. um, if TikTok is the um, brief valley, so like how TikTok works, not how X works, yes. it's not how um, Instagram, Facebook works. So it's an entire ecosystem and that if you, if you manage to, sort of find a way of harness, harnessing the powers of all the four or five different social media into just pushing your message, whatever it is, entertainment, et in, informative, or whatever it is. Uh, I, I will say so, for me, I won't say success based on a particular platform. I will say it's your ability to harness and yes. sort of make the entire ecosystem work as one. If you, if you're, as I said again, it's still a PTSD from sports. Yeah. If you're just going to rely on one, on one. And that's a very uncertain feature. So you better be be everywhere. You better be everywhere so that if this one doesn't work, you can still work on this as you think of where am I going to learn five years um, to come in my life? Because I don't know. I, I didn't know five years ago, ten years ago, this is what I'll be doing for a living and, yeah. and be happy with it and be comfortable. And so I, I, I also don't know five years from now uh, where it's going to be because I think the motto that I usually take is Take one day at a time. As long as you are better at what you do than you were yesterday, yeah. then you're building up to, to something. So I prefer short-term goals than long-term goals, which is good to have. But for me, it's like if I'm able to kick, tick all my short-term goals daily, weekly, hourly, yeah, then it can be able to build up into something new than just maybe waiting for 10 years. And then after, it's like Vision 2030, Kenya's Vision 2030. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost here and there's nothing we've done. So it's it, it it's always better to you know to after week one you're like I'm, I'm a better person than yeah. I was the other day a better content creator a better rugby player actually it's the same principle that I used to apply in sports is what I apply to now now applying it in life yeah use the good times you know to plan for the bad times the bad times, the bad yeah. times are coming the bad times they, are coming they are always there it's life it's the duality of life they are yeah. good and bad times if you're experiencing a run of success know the bad times are coming. So, and by the time they come, if you're prepared for the bad times, you'll have taken the power out of that bad time. Now you can be able to just control the, your future, or, you know, or your destiny. Ugali. That one I'm right. Ugali, Ugali. That one I'm yes, right. right that I'm right. Yes. So, we've seen the meal here. What uh -huh. does it take to prepare this? What do you go through? Uh, it's too much. We don't see the behind the scenes. No, the, the, the cooking is easy. Yes. If it's cooking, even for 20 people, it will take me two hours to three hours. Yes. Yeah, but the shooting, yeah. Uh, the behind if, the scenes. If it's an entire um, uh, video, the 90 second you usually see, it, it usually starts from 8.30 in the morning till 5.30 when I'm losing light. That's when the, the shoot ends. Cause, yeah. Whoa. Because I'm long. doing it by myself. Yeah. So it's all about moving the tripod, the camera, um, here and there. Like the chopping scene alone, yes. it's usually five seconds or less. Yes. It takes around one and a half to two hours to shoot. Just the, the chopping. The chopping and yeah, whatever. The chopping and then the editing and, and whatever. Yeah. And then the editing, I'm also doing everything on the phone. I don't have a team. As I said earlier, I prefer working by myself. Yeah. So it's, it's controlled chaos. And yeah, it's challenging, but yeah, as a sportsman, you know, everything that's challenging is frustrating and addictive at the same time. So I'll hate it. I'll like, okay, I'm not doing this again, but tomorrow I'll find myself back here. That's the beauty of being self-employed, you know? It's a Saturday, yeah. I am, can be working. Yeah. Uh, it's a weekday. On Monday, I can be go playing golf. And yeah, I think that's, that's what I wanted my life to sort of look like, to sort of have that 
freedom that um, freedom yeah. yeah in future to be present for your family when you're needed to be to be busy when you're needed to me to be yeah so that flexibility helps a lot all right um i can't wait to d- dig in but before even we dig in um we're looking. finished because this is it's done it's done now there's one key thing missing what soup I gave you water. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you water. And, uh, you gave me water. And, you, and you produce saliva. <laughs> Why do you want me to do the job? Like Why do I do the doing? job? Okay. <laughs> water is here. I'll take that. Yeah. Take water and swallow but, saliva. But listen, you mentioned, so the milestones, rugby, we have the the the, the, the Sevens uh, Series trophy in Singapore. We have the Commonwealth Games, the Olympic Games, and all those trophies you've won with Mwamba and the like. But TikTok, in this new profession of yours uh-huh. this new content creation that you do what key milestones do you think you have achieved in this short period of time i think roughly going four years four five years mm, content creation yeah oh yeah i yeah, have achieved a lot of of course growing mm, my audience um yeah growing out outside kenya outside east africa outside africa and now it's um a, a bit more on the, on the global side managed to partner with lots of or brands that I sort of feel like um, we are we are aligned together, or sort of brands that I always wanted to to work together. Yeah. Um, I've also because um, me for me I'm also huge at giving back. Like whatever talent or skill you are, as long as you're monetizing, yeah. Uh, as long as it, it puts food on your table, that means you're taking away from the society for for for, for, for food your own to good. Yeah. Table. So you always need to sort of give back as well to the society because it's a give and take world. So I've also been able to, you know, give back to the society in the limited, in my, in my limited um, capacity and capabilities here and there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've inspired a lot of people because for me it's all about inspiring. Uh, people say I've inspired them. Yeah, it, it, it's good. And for the future, like now, uh, I think I've been able to, yeah, I've worked as, as, as apart from corporate, I've been uh, worked with um, various embassies, you know, in terms of food diplomacy, like there are, there are lots of things to be, yeah. to be done outside there. So I sort of, I don't want to say I've achieved a lot. Um, it, it's been a steady growth because people just assume actually I blew up on COVID. I started with a food blog. Food way blog, back yes. in 2006 it used to be called women should cook yes not women women but we men oh we men yeah, should cook yes should like cook. me oh yeah, terrible so it, yeah it's, it's been a journey it's uh, consistent you know hard work persistence and everything like you never know um, how the future like i never when i started blogging i didn't even know how to use a video uh like a phone to record videos yes. um it, it's a skill i picked up uh, along the way and that's why i tell people in content creation in, your ability to unlearn, you know, should be faster than your ability to learn. Because for me, I started with a blog. I realized, okay, blogging, times are moving, times are moving. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was using, I, did, I even had a DSL, uh, SLR camera, which was a bit hectic, you know, learning. Because uh, with blogging, it's all about composition, about food photography. But yes. I didn't know that skill is going to help me later when it comes now to shooting videos. Yeah. So I already had that skill, composition and everything. So for me now, shooting the videos became a bit more easier. So it's all about, life is all about picking up little skills, like carpentry. Like I never knew it would help me, but it made me, I made the station myself, the chopping board and everything. So use every opportunity in life, everywhere you find yourself to... To just pick up um, a skill, you never know when it might be needed. And I usually tell, I think my advice to to anyone, every, even sportsmen, the young ones, yeah. the reason why we usually say train harder and then the game will be easier. You know, the training has to be worse. It has to be tougher than the actual game. Yeah. Yeah. So I usually tell people in whatever field you are, uh, even if you're a content creator, a sportsman, a banker, whatever it is, Talent is cheap. Talent is cheap like salt, you know. Yeah. Um, you can be talented, but nowadays talent can be manufactured. If I work hard and to learn whatever you're talented at, I'll end up being uh, better than you. Cause yeah. Hard work beats talent each and every other day. So I usually tell anyone, whatever field, uh, field you are, the, first of all, don't compare yourself to others. That's, I think, the... Run your own race. Yeah, it's, a, it's ABCD. Everyone knows about that. The only comparison is between you and yourself. Are you the same person in that field that you were one day, one week, one year ago? Are you growing? Is there progress? And 
an, a, the most basic way that I use personally, because people are different, is uh, look at the amount of skill you you've picked up. You know, in a week, maybe yeah. uh, this week I picked up no skill at all. So basically, I've been I've made no progress this week, because in everything you're doing, you're always better off upskilled, so that when you're needed, you can be able to to deliver. Because opportunities will be there. Whatever you're praying for, uh, praying for, whatever you want, it will come to you. But when it gets there, will you be prepared? Or will it just be a fleeting moment and then go away? So you want to be famous, you want to make money out of influencing. That fame will come. But then what you do with it the first one day, one week, one month, one year, will determine your trajectory in the future. So always have more than enough skill because it's easier to downskill than given the opportunity yeah. and then you can't be able to to capitalize on it and that's why especially many on social media it's all about the trends and fades don't follow the trends just pick your own path you know trend it's it's, it's easier to get the final destination but that road is full of people yeah be your own artist choose a path less travel it will take longer to get there but then you won't get lost because there's, um, there's it's, not... It's your path. It's your path. Yeah. If you follow the trendy path that has a lot of people, you'll get lost amongst other people. You'll get distracted along the, the way. So do your thing. It's not working. You have 10 views today. But at the back of your mind, just imagine sitting in a room, 10 people are just listening to you. It's, it's not as small as it looks like. It's yeah. big. Just keep doing what you're doing as long as you're improving in whatever you're doing. Trust me, the opportunities will come. And the worst thing I usually tell people it's not the lack of opportunities is when opportunity finds you not you're not ready yeah that is the tragedy of life trust the process trust the process are you not a fan are you an Arsenal fan fuck Arsenal I don't know what I'm cutting Arsenal but the team that I support is not doing any better which one Man United but at least we sent to (laughs) an and taste the chicken taste the chicken and then drop a line for us there. Mmm, salt and salty. As it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Any regrets? Um, I just say no regrets. Many lessons. Many just lessons. to be diplomatic, but yeah. everyone has their own deg- uh, yeah. regrets. Mm, there's a regret, I would say. Um, actually, I don't have um, that many regrets. Oh, I would have taken financial literacy way, way earlier. Yeah, because basically every other thing in life, I the regrets I have are the soft skills that yeah. I didn't learn when I was still playing. The financial literacy, public uh, public speaking, like it took me a lot of time before I was able to look at a camera and start yeah. talking. Yeah, But I had to do it because it's what I'm doing. So it puts food on the, on the table, yeah. So lots of things, people skills, that, that one I, I kind of had, but some people also come out of the system, they don't have people skills, you don't know how to live with others, you know, because, you know, yeah, you're living in the same 23 different players the entire year. It's not the same as traveling from this country to another. Yeah. Also some simple things like, you know, booking an airline ticket, because everything there was used to... Um, they, they, they'll do it for you. The TM, the TM is that. Yeah, we were just like shit. <laughs> You're like, yeah. okay, 5.30. Airport. It says like this, we are the airport. When we land, it says we go, we eat. Go sleep. They'll call us when it's time to wake up. The team bus will be waiting. But when you're outside, you have to book your own ticket, book your own hotel, make sure you don't miss the flight and everything. And it, it gets a bit confusing. It's also that independence in life is what um, I also lacked. I, I still struggle with, the, with that. I, I, I kind of like things sometimes being made easier for me because I'm yeah. good at doing. I'm not good at, at planning. Cause planning because yeah. as a sportsman, all the planning was done for you ahead of time. Your job was to deliver as a machine. Yeah. What we taught you, go and replicate it. Forget about how food will get to your table, how the food is prepared, uh, how the system just works. It doesn't. That's why sportsmen like we live in our own bubble. When you come outside here, you find the life. Life the, the is, life is a, different shop, a different outside world here. outside. Yeah. yeah. Before we close. Which famous guy do you want to host on this balcony? I know you have hosted many. Obama. Obama. The president, Barack Obama. The former president. Former president. Yeah. Yes. I have Obama, well, yeah, and 50 cent. And 50 cent. Yeah, <laughs> the dedication to hate yes. is unmatched. Many men in the club. <laughs> PIMP. <laughs> Sing PIMP on the balcony here for you. 
Well, as we get ready to dig into our meal, uh, thank you very much, Dennis. As you get ready, I've already digged in. As I get ready to <laughs> put my hands on some chicken. Thank you very much, Dennis, uh, for welcoming us into your home. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully you will uh, get the shock of your life next weekend. Uh, see an Elgon Cup in Uganda and uh, you'll take back your bitter words you say today. If Uganda win, I'm taking back. All right. I'll deactivate Twitter. You'll deactivate Twitter. <laughs> You've had it here. Which I know podcast. you guys are not going to win anyway. You're not going to win. I'm not going to win. Give it time. Cut this clip out and put it out first before even put out the podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dennis Mbachi on the Fatcast podcast. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening in. Share with us your thoughts from today's episode. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.